Hey yo! How are you doing? Welcome back to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. My name's Dave K and I hope you're all well, wherever you are or whatever you're doing. And we've got a little bit of sun in Sobey Bridge today. Uh, it's been the beginning of March. Uh, sorry if I've not done a video for a while. I think the last video that I did were kind of Christmas time. But we've had a house moving, everything else, lots and lots of things going on. Uh, and we've just run out of time to make videos. But we're back now. Uh, the other thing which is good news is we've started building wheels again for orange bikes. And orange bikes were in a little bit of trouble uh, a couple of months ago. But we're back at building wheels for them. For those of you who don't know, we do build all orange bikes wheels for the, for the bikes that are built here in the UK. So we're back with that, which is good news. Um, and today's video, we've got a Polar e-bike in the workshop and I thought it'd make a good video because some of you will be familiar with the symptoms that we've got on this particular bike. Um, I've not had a chance to look at it so we together uh, we're gonna go in blind and we're gonna try and diagnose what's going on with this e-bike and hopefully we can try and sort it out. So let's crack on. So this customer is complaining that his e-bike is dead as a dodo. Now, for those of you who don't know what a dodo is, a dodo was a bird that got extinct in around about 18, no, 1681, if I'm not corrected. Just a little bit of interesting info for you there. Anyway, so he's complaining that this bike is completely dead, okay? And the Purion display will not turn on, okay? The bike is completely dead. Let's take a look. So the normal way of turning this particular e-bike on will actually press the on button at the top for a second. It kind of flickers very, very, very faintly on occasion. You can actually see it flicker in there. And then it doesn't actually come on at all. There could be a few reasons why that's happening. We could have a faulty Purion. It could be that the battery's gone in the Purion altogether and we need to replace the battery. It could be that there's a, a, a faulty connection on the battery down to the motor. There could be quite a number of things that, uh, that, that makes this bike not work. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at each individual component and try and diagnose it that way and find out where this particular fault is. So I think the first thing that we need to do basically is double check that the battery has life and it actually takes a charge. So let's take the battery out first. Okay, so we'll just take the cover off at the front. There's a little button right at the front there and we'll just pull that out and put it to one side. Now this particular bike needs a key to get the battery out. So we'll just bob the key in and turn it and it should drop slightly out and press the button and the whole lot should come out okay so that says battery let's have a look see if there's any actually life in there okay yes so there's a full charge in there let's see if it actually takes a charge let's plug it into a charger and we'll see if it takes a charge okay so it's taking a charge and it's telling us that it's actually nearly full. You can actually see that little light flashing right on the end. Let me try and focus in. If you can see there, can you see that little light flashing? Okay, so the battery's okay and it is taking a charge. Now I'm trying to do this like you guys would at home. Uh, <clears throat> obviously you guys not being a Bosch dealer you don't have any kind of diagnostic software so I'm trying to do this as though you guys have not have access to the diagnostic software and you have to do it like this way first so next step let's check the battery in the Purion display let's take the battery out and replace it and we'll put a new one in see if that makes a difference okay so this comes off there's a little three mil allen key under there just undo that slightly, take it off, and then that'll give us access to the battery compartment underneath, which you can actually see there. Okay, so we've got the new battery in the Purion display. We've bobbed it back on the bar for now, 
we've put his battery back in the frame we'll turn it on and see what happens here we go nothing dead as a dodo okey doke next step now on this particular bike we don't need to start uh, taking loads of stuff off to get the cover off to the, of the motor to expose the wiring looms inside. It's a single cover on this QB bike. There's one hex bolt at the back which we'll undo with a 4mm Allen key. Put that to one side. And then there's two small ones at the front that just go over the, uh, the battery compartment door. Now generally what we, what we like to do, because we never know what we might find with e-bikes and there's that many different components on them, <coughs> we like to keep a new component for each, each particular part of the bike. Now that includes a new wiring loom, a new pure on display, a new battery connector, uh, a new rear uh, cadence sensor. We like to keep the whole lot uh, in just to basically swap components out without taking the whole lot out because one component might be faulty where all the rest might be fine. So what we do is we change one component each, each uh, one at a time to try actually find out what the fault is. So let's take this cover off. And it just drops down, or it should do. There we are. And that exposes the connections down there. You can probably see them. I'll move the camera in closer. Okay, we can see also in here, uh, while we're looking, we can see if there's any damage to these particular wires or cables. And they look in good condition to me. There's no obvious damage to any of them. So... <clears throat> So they look fine. So this is the one for the Purion display. That's the one that we need to remove. So we just get some long nose pliers very, very carefully, hold it by the sheath and just gently pull it out of its socket. Now these only go in one way. Okay, so you need to be careful to make sure that you get them in the right way around. Uh, it won't go in any other way, but if, it, if, you know, if you try, don't force it. You'll feel it slide in its place. So here's the new Purion display. What we'll do is we'll bob this connection in, put them down very carefully, push it home. Okay. And then we've got our new Purion display. Right, so the battery's back in. We've no need to disconnect the battery. Um, the battery's back in and the, obviously the new Purion display is plugged in. So let's turn it on and see if we get any difference. Nothing. Not a sausage. Okay, I did think that this were a faulty few PR on display, but it just goes to show you that everything's not all as it seems. Uh, you might think that, that you know where it's going on with it, but uh, again, it's dead as a dodo. No display at all. So what we're going to do, basically, because I'm going to grab this motor out of a spare box here, the one that I know that works, we use it for testing. Uh, and it usually tells us whether the motor's faulty or not. I know you guys are probably not going to have a spare motor, but I think you'll find it interesting to see what, whether this thing fires up or not uh, with the existing connections. Now this tells us, we know that the motor's all right, so this tells us basically if it doesn't fire off after we plug this motor in, we know that there's a cabling issue, we know that there's a power issue with these harnesses. So then, obviously what we do is check and take, and take the harness out and replace it for another one. There's a few ways we can actually do this. We can diagnose what's going on with this bike, but it essentially it's a case of uh, taking parts out and putting new parts in. So we'll kind of skip a step, if you like, and I'll grab this motor, I'll turn the camera around, we'll take these connections out of this bike and plug it into a new motor and see if we can get it to fire up that way. 
So this little bad boy here has got us out of the shit loads of times uh, because I know that the motor's working and I know it's right. So we'll disconnect the power cable. There's a little clip under here. That just comes off like that. We'll disconnect the sensor on the back wheel. That comes out just like that. Again. Okay. And then we'll plug these into a test motor. That goes in there like that. See if we can reach that round there somehow. That's it. That's it. And then the sensor cable goes in there, that one there. Okay, again, you'll feel it when it's not in the right place because it just will not go forward. And you'll know when it's in the right place. Okay, you can feel it clicking as well. Okay, so we've got a test motor in there connected up to the existing cabling. So let's go back up to the Purion display and let's see what's going on there. See if we can actually get life. Okay, like I said before, if this doesn't work, uh, then we've got a cabling or a harness issue. We've got a wiring issue somewhere. But if this fires up now, potentially we've got a faulty motor. Let's see what goes on. Oh, look at that. So we've got instant power. So what this is telling us at this stage is we have a faulty motor. That's not good news really, uh, because um, a motor is an expensive article. It's an expensive, uh, it's an expensive thing. You're looking to change one of these round about 720 quid for a new motor. So it's not a cheap do. But essentially, that's what we're looking at. Now, all's not lost just yet, okay? I know it's looking a little bit bleak, but there is a possibility that this software or firmware on this particular motor in this bike is not up to date, okay? Maybe that it needs, it needs updating it. There might be some additional firmware that's come out for this motor that we need to update that could solve the issue now for that obviously we need diagnostic software so at this point yeah we're potentially looking at a motor issue <clears throat> so well we know we're looking at a motor issue so what we need to do is unfortunately we need to plug it into as diagnostics so i have done my best for you to try and solve it without but we're going to need to plug it in uh, update some firmware and see if that makes a difference if it doesn't make a difference, then we take potentially will. We are looking at a new motor. So let's plug it in to us Bosch Diagnostics. We'll take this motor uh, off, this test motor, and we'll plug it back into the existing motor, existing motor, and we'll plug it in and see what goes on. So here we are. We've just uh, plugged the bike in. We're just waiting for uh, the software to read uh, the, uh, <coughs> the parameters of the bike and it'll start to display those once it's actually read them and put them on the screen. Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, what we need to do is we need to go to the Diagnostics tab, and you can see these three other tabs on the top left. We've got Cycle Computer, Drive, and Battery. Click on the battery. There's nothing wrong with the battery, so we'll click on the Drive unit. As you can see there, there's quite a lot of uh, errors within that particular motor. One of them, obviously, it's saying that there's a, a Purion display error, uh, but we know it's not the Purion display itself uh, because we've changed that. It's likely to be a, an error on the connection on the board within the motor. So what we need to do is we're going to force a firmware update for the motor. So that means that we're going to reinstall the, for, the firmware from scratch uh, for this motor just in case um, it needs updating or it's become corrupt or anything like that. So we'll update it, we'll cho choose the right uh, right firmware for this particular bike. I know it's 165 crank length, so we're going to go for 85 newton meters because it's a Gen 4 motor. 
and we'll click that and then it'll update uh, the firmware. So we've installed the new firmware now you can actually see that it's gone into the bike uh, from the screen. Uh, we'll turn the bike off, turn it back on again and we'll have a look uh, at the, uh, the faults uh, <clears throat> or any issues that we've got with the motor now it's been updated uh, with the new firmware. So you can see that the, all, the, all the error messages have gone apart from just one and that's related to the Purion display. Again, I don't think it's the display itself. I think it's the connection uh, on the board that's the issue here. Uh, we've gone and proved that, haven't we, by uh, changing the display and the motor as well. So what we need to do now is go back to the Purion display uh, and fire it up and see if we can get life uh, now we've updated the software. So we can see from the diagnostics that we've just looked at uh, what sort of errors we've got coming up with this particular motor and this particular Purion display as well. Uh, there seems to be quite a few conflicting errors here but don't forget that we've swapped the motor out for a different one and the Purion display booted up first time which potentially tells us that the issue again is with the motor as we suspected. Now the reason why I'm saying that is I'm thinking that this potentially these two problems here. First of all I think we've got an internal software error with the motor which, which you saw on the, on the diagnostic but secondly I think there's issues with the connectors not on the Purion side but on the internal side of the motors I think there's an issue with the connection there as well. So just to double check that if you remember the diagnostic says change the Purion display, reconnect it, take it to bits, reconnect it so we'll put this new one back on again and we'll see if we can get it to boot up. That basically rules out again the problem of the, uh, the, the Purion display. So let's plug it in and we'll see what happens. I'm not hopeful to be honest which sounds a bit dreadful really but I'm not hopeful that this is going to do it. I think the issue is inside the motor so let's turn it on from here. The battery's in and everything so we'll turn it on and we'll see if we can get a display and again we've got nothing at all okay so that kind of confirms to me that we've got something going on inside this motor not the outcome that we wanted uh, admittedly uh, it looks like we're going to need a new motor for this bike so what are the options now for this particular customer well there's, there's a few options available but what is the worst case scenario the worst case scenario is that is going to have to buy a new motor at full retail price uh, which for this bike it's round about 720 quid so it's not a cheap do being the worst case scenario uh, that's what it's going to have to pay now Bosch don't want anybody to be without a bike and so they're very, they're very, very flexible in terms of how we're going to get this sorted out and they will uh, discount a motor if the bike is under five years old providing that you are the original owner and you have a receipt. Uh, the other option if, the, if the, the bike is within two to three years old potentially there's a new uh, motor available providing that he's the original, original owner and he has the receipt. So it's looking pretty grim to be honest. We could create a service case even though the customer has no warranty we could create a service case to see if there's anything they would suggest to us that we haven't done that they would uh, suggest to actually make this motor get back uh, as it should be uh, but from experience uh, and from the diagnostics and the changes that we've made it would seem to me that this is a terminal motor issue uh, and it's likely uh, that uh, we're going to need a new one. 
So I think the lesson learned here is if you've got a receipt for your bike, keep hold of it because you never know when you're going to need it, especially on an e-bike. Um, so, and I hope you kind of had a, a better understanding as to how we go about finding faults uh, and looking for problems and uh, looking at various different parts and how we swap them out. On that note, I shall say toodle pip, look out for the next video because it's what the chuff is going on with e-bike motors. Toodle pip. <laughs>